In this tutorial, I am going to teach you how to switch colors for an active object inside of Unreal Engine 5. This is going to use C++, so we are going to do a little bit of coding, but it's nothing complicated. Do not be afraid. So if you're ready for this lesson on how to code in Unreal Engine 5, subscribe to the channel and let's begin. To start things off, we're going to go into our C++ classes in order to create a new C++ class that is going to come off of character. The reason we're using characters is characters already have both a capsule component and a skeletal mesh present and that's gonna make our lives way easier to show how to do this. I'm gonna call my character Color Changer, but feel free to take whatever creative liberty you want with that. Let's create that class and open it in our Visual Studio. Once everything's sorted out, we can go into our header file because we're gonna set up a little bit of a contract here. For the purposes of this tutorial, all of our variables are gonna be public to make things easier to understand. We are going to create three variables. Two that are going to point to specific materials that are going to be present for what we're going to be switching to and from, and the third variable is going to be a boolean that is going to control when we switch. This is the first material. You can see here that this is a U property. A U property means we're going to be able to set this within the blueprint editor. Edit defaults only is a tag that allows us to set the default value, but once we actually start playing, we aren't going to be able to further edit this. The category tag allows us to set a section within the blueprint that is going to be labeled as tutorial, which allows us to better sort through all these properties that we're creating. Then finally here, you're going to see that I'm forward declaring a U material interface. The U material interface is the material and we are forward declaring with this class keyword so that I don't have to include another header file up top here. This just makes our code a little bit neater and makes things faster to compile. I'm going to paste this code one more time and I'm going to simply change the variable name on this second one to material2. And lastly, I'm going to make that boolean. The way we're going to do this is I'm going to take that same template we've been using and now I'm going to change this to edit anywhere. The reason for this is our boolean value is going to control what material we're using. So I want to be able to change that in the game, hence edit anywhere. Now this is no longer a class, so we're able to delete all the way through this and I'm going to make this a boolean. And I'm just gonna call this material swap. So now with all that out of the way, we're good to go and implement an actual material swap here. For the purposes of this demonstration, we are going to be utilizing the tick function because that's gonna make things the easiest for us to do. So let's go into our C++ file and go into that tick method. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up a simple if statement. If material swap is true, we are going to be on material one. But if material swap is false, then we're going to switch to material two. So comments are lovely, but how do we actually do this? In general, you're going to need access to the mesh that you need to change the material on. And then you're going to need to call a method off of that called set material. Luckily, since we are inheriting from a character, we can call something very simple called get mesh. If we hover over this, this returns the mesh sub object. Like I said in the beginning, all characters have a mesh for us to use. This is just a method for us to get that mesh. So now that we have our mesh, we're gonna call a method off of this called set material. If we open up some parentheses, we'll see that IntelliSense is gonna tell us what we need. And in this case, we need an element index and the actual material. Here's an example of what an elemental index is. If we open up any blueprint that has a mesh, we can see that there's always the mesh component and then the materials component. We can see here that this is element zero. Some meshes have more than one element. So you would have element zero, element one, etc. We want to give in the element that we're replacing. In this case, it's simple. All of our blueprints that we're gonna be working with only have the one material, so it's always going to be element zero. But at least you now have some context on what the heck this actually means. So with our index set, we can now set the actual material that we're going to be swapping to. In this case, I said in the comment that this is going to be material one, and I see no reason to change that. Top it off with a semicolon, then we're good to go into the else to do something pretty much identical. So identical, in fact, I'm just going to copy this line of code. I'm gonna paste it in our else, and I'm going to change the variable here to material two. We now have everything we need to actually compile. So let's save this here and go and compile. With a successful compile, we're good to go and right click on our color changer C++ class and create a blueprint that is based off of this color changer. I'm gonna leave this as my color changer and I'm just gonna put this in the content folder because I'm really lazy. So let's create this blueprint class and it's gonna bring up the blueprint that we have just built. As I had teased before, here's the proof. All characters come with this capsule component, an arrow that points in the general direction it's facing, and a mesh. So let's set some stuff up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a mesh. This does not have to be fancy. I recommend just giving the mannequin or something. I'm going to use this abomination because I made him and I feel like I need to use him. I am not being very precise with where the capsule component goes because we are not worried about collision here. We are simply making something ugly. Now you'll notice I set my skeletal mesh, but there is no material component. That is because you need to hit compile. Once you compile, the material that's attached to the skeletal mesh asset will appear inside of your blueprint and you are allowed to change it at will. 
However, I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is go back into the base here and I'm going to search for my tutorial section. Now this is the name that I gave this section in code. And you can see that all of those things that we created have showed up here just as expected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set some materials. I'm going to make a nice bold pink for material one, and I'm going to make a nice shade of blue for material two. Now I'm going to compile this and I'm going to save. And with that saved, we're good to go and drag in my color changer into the world. I'm going to make this guy big. He's going to stand right up there and I'm going to delete this. So I hit play and we can see that this not man here has fallen to the ground and is a nice shade of blue. I'm going to hit F8, which is going to break away from my controller and allow me to click on things to inspect them in the world. If I go to the details pane on the right here, we can see all of the details associated to the object that I've selected. Searching once again for my tutorial section, we can find the material swap. You'll notice that we aren't able to set the actual materials that we will be swapping to and from once we're in the game. That is because of that keyword tag, edit defaults only. We are in the game. We are no longer setting a default, so it's not here. Anyway, if I toggle this to true, we will see that our character changes to that first active color. It's not a very vibrant pink. Ah, it's just because it needed to load. That makes perfect sense. But we can see that it did swap materials. And when I go and change this to false again, we go back to blue. And as I continue to click this back and forth, it's doing that material swap just as we need and expect to happen. So that's the basics on how to swap materials in Unreal Engine 5. This took me a little bit to figure out how to do in code, so I figured I'd make a tutorial to make it easier for you. If you got value out of this tutorial, subscribe to the channel, because I'm making videos like this all the time. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.